Good afternoon. It's such an honor to share in a tribute to a man who has had such a profound impact on all of our lives. Andy Davis was a friend, and he's someone that I love, someone who has left his fingerprints on my heart, and because of knowing him, my life is so much richer and so much fuller. I first met Andy in around 2009. He called my office one afternoon and introduced himself and asked if I could meet him at the Polk Building in McDonough. He began to tell me about a mural that was painted on the wall inside the building, a mural that a lot of people had forgotten about, painted by an artist by the name of Charlotte. And I readily agreed to meet him there, and I remember standing in front of the building that day, and I saw a man walking down the street carrying a ladder over his shoulder. And I thought how funny that looked, coming down the streets of McDonough, but it was Andy, and he not only wanted to give me a history lesson about the mural in the, in the old post office, but he also wanted to bring the ladder so that he could inspect it for any damage that he um, might see because of the, um, the fact that the mural was sitting in a building without heat or air and the sunlight streaming through the windows was potentially causing damage to the mural. And so after the history lesson was over and after Andy gave some suggestions on ways that we could protect the mural, he began to share with me um, a little bit about his artistic work. We became very good friends that day and I became a huge fan of Andy Davis, the artist. And from that point on, um, we had some interesting conversations about art and politics. Andy was passionate about the arts. He was passionate about people. And he was very passionate about building a community around the arts because Andy believed that art was something that could bridge gaps. And by that I mean Andy felt like you could bridge the gap between people of different political beliefs or different religions and you know you could bridge the gap between socioeconomic standing and you could bridge gaps between generations. And so Andy wanted to build a community in Henry County around the arts so that people would have something to rally around together. In order to show us how effective the arts could be in building community, Andy took a small group and then later a larger group into Atlanta to visit some of the art districts. We um, you know, visited the King Plow Center and uh, we visited Castleberry Hills and uh, we visited the Cabbage Town Art District and, and Andy, you, you could see his eyes lighting up as, as he shared that these were communities where the buildings were run down and they were dilapidated, but artists began moving into these, these areas and, and by bringing art into the community, it brought life back to the community and, and you saw the property values begin to go back up and you begin to see a lot of activity in these areas and so he wanted us to see how valuable art was to a thriving community. On returning back home from the art trips to downtown Atlanta, you know, Andy and I dreamed about the possibility of maybe using the Polk Building one day to create an art center for Henry County. And um, somewhere around mid-2010, Andy came to me with another idea. And the idea was to create a work of art for Henry County. And he talked about how much he enjoyed the different um, works of art he was able to create for other communities throughout Georgia and even in other states. But he loved Henry County and he wanted to do something in his own home community. And he wanted to give a gift to the people that he lived with in Henry County. And he proposed doing a statue of Patrick Henry and Patrick Henry, of course, is the patriot that Henry County is named after. So Andy asked me if I would help him with this project and I readily agreed. And so together we put together a steering committee and um, got busy raising money to create this work of art. But Andy didn't just look at a picture and say, oh, this is a nice picture, let me create a work of art. Andy immersed himself in the people who he was recreating through his art. 
and he began to study the life of Patrick Henry and he looked at historical documents and he read his speeches and he actually took a trip to Red Hill, Patrick Henry's home in Virginia and met with some of his descendants and uh, he wanted to observe their mannerisms because you know, oftentimes different mannerisms are passed down through generations and, and he felt like he could gain a better understanding of who Patrick Henry was. And he was so excited because when on his visit there, he got to hold the letter opener that Patrick Henry used when he gave his famous speech, give me liberty or give me death. And so after Andy's visit there, he really felt like he could capture the essence of who Patrick Henry was and the emotions and bring that to life in this sculpture that he was going to dedicate to Henry County. As the months dragged on, we were really having some challenges just squeezing money out of people um, as we were, you know, just slowly emerging from the recession. But Andy never lost heart for this project. And when our committee would meet, he always gave us a pep talk about how we needed to press in there and we just needed to get this information to the right people because once they heard about the project, they were going to be excited to participate and, and to help fund the project. And, um, you know, when he would talk to us about the different speaking engagements that he had, we would always encourage him. And, and you guys know this, you know, Andy, put on your shoes. Um, you can't go barefoot to Kiwanis. You can't go barefoot before the McDonough City Council. So make sure you put your shoes on. It was a lot of fun. We uh, all enjoyed working together. And I have to admit, there were a few little testy moments in that. But it was such a wonderful experience to be part of such a historic project. And so two and a half years later, we're on McDonough Square and we're having the ceremony to unveil the beautiful work of Andy Davis um, where he brought Patrick Henry to life. And so we dedicated this bronze sculpture of Patrick Henry to the citizens of Henry County. And it's going to stand there in the square um, uh, not only honoring Pat Patrick Henry, but to honor Andy Davis for many generations to come. Now, of course, most of this history is known by the majority of those of you who are attending the service today. But there is a little bit of information that I'll share with you that you're probably not familiar with. Just a few weeks before the clay sculpture was completed, I got a call from Andy and it seemed like vandals had broken into the studio and they knocked the clay sculpture over and broke Patrick Henry's arm off and um, had done some damage to, um, to the, clay, uh, to the uh, clay sculpture. And so I asked Andy, I said, Andy, are you gonna call the police and make a report? And he said, no, I'm not. And I said, well, why? And he said, because I don't want anything negative attached to this work of art. I want people to see it as a positive experience and I want them to see the finished product and I don't want them thinking about um, anything negative that happened in the process. And he said, and not only that, he said, I really think that teenagers were responsible for this and if they knew what this art project meant, I don't think they would have done what they, what they did. And so in that moment, I saw Andy extending that grace to someone who had tried to cause harm to him, but he, he really saw that they, they didn't understand what they were doing. And I just had such a profound respect for him at that moment. You know, I could spend a lot of time talking about the amazing talents of Andy Davis. Um, I could talk about all of his other works you know, I could talk about his dream and vision for an art center, the art center that you're sitting in today. And I could tell you about his idea for removing the center aisle in Congress in Washington, D.C. Andy called me up one day and he said, have you ever studied the floor of Congress and, and the architecture and how it's laid out? And I told him that, no, I had not really looked at that at all. And he said, I think I see a problem there and we're not getting along and, and our, our elected leaders are not getting along. He said, but there's an aisle, a wide aisle in the middle of Congress and it's separating both sides. And if the Republicans and the Democrats don't talk to each other and get to know each other, 
How in the world can they work out the problems of our country? We're facing very serious problems that require people to work together, but yet they're divided. And I want to start a movement to remove the center aisle from Congress and see if that would make a difference. And then I could talk to you, too, about Andy Davis, the inventor. And some people know that he had a patent on a number of projects, of products, and some people don't. Um, and I could talk to you about that. But really, those are just extensions of who Andy Davis is, but that's not Andy Davis the person. At the heart of Andy Davis was his desire to touch people. And he saw art as a powerful way of bringing people together around a, a work of beauty. And he also believed that art brought out the good in people. And I can tell you that it, Andy's art brought out the good in me. Andy Davis was brilliant. He was gifted. He was passionate. He was witty. He was creative. He was caring, and he was kind. You could see that kindness in the way he reached out to children with disabilities to try to bring art into their life, and you saw it in the way that he went to the children's hospital to take art to them. And you could see that kindness in the way that he adopted a baby duck that he found in the parking lot of the studio. Andy Davis was well loved by this community and he leaves a legacy in his short life and it was short that others with length of days will never equal and I don't think I'll ever look at another piece of art without thinking of Andy because he taught me to look through a different set of eyes and to see it in a different way as a way to bring beauty into people's lives, in a way to bring joy into people's lives, and as a means to bridge gaps between different people. And so I'll always think of him fondly when I see a work of art. You know, I don't really like goodbyes, and, and it's not like Andy is gone, because he continues to live in the hearts and lives of everyone he touched. So I will simply say that I love you, my friend, and I will see you later.